Okay, hi math students. Today I'm not here, uh, but I still want to do the review with you. Um, but first, are there any guesses on the brain teaser? Think about it. It is anyone. It's northeast, N-E-1, okay? All right, today our, uh, today our review is going to be on rate of change, it's going to be on functions, and it's going to be on systems of equations. We're going to start with rate of change. Anytime you hear rate of change, unit rate, slope, uh, you're going to start with your delta y over your delta x, your vertical change over your horizontal change. How many am I going up compared to how many am I moving to the right? So we always start with this. This is the most important thing to always write down. When we're talking about initial value, we're talking about our y-intercept. So our first example that we're going to do together, find the rate of change and the initial value of the two examples. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with our rate of change. Okay, notice change in y, vertical change compared to my horizontal change. So how much am I changing on my y? From negative 4 to positive 2, I'm going up 6. How much am I changing on my x? From 1 to 3, I'm going up 2. 6 divided by 2, my slope is 3. Let's find the rate of change over here. My rate of change is always the number in front of the variable x. My rate of change is negative 5, or negative 5 over 1. Now let's do our initial value, or our y-intercept. Whenever you have a table or they don't give you your y-intercept, you're finding your zero term. So when x is zero, what is y? Well, when x was one, y is negative four. My slope is three. So if I go back three, my y-intercept is negative seven, and I can check my work. Here's my slope, here's my y-intercept. So if I put 0 in for x, 3 times 0 is 0, 0 minus 7 is negative 7. I can also check if I put 1 in for x, 3 times 1 is 3, 3 minus 7 is negative 4. Over here, my y-intercept, my 0 term is my constant 5. Okay, let's go over this together. The two tables below show how much purified water two, ma two machines produce at certain times after pouring water into the machine. What is the initial value? So what is the y-intercept and what is the slope for both? Okay, I'm gonna find the slope first. You should have your change in y over your change in x. I'm going up six over one. Up six, the amount of water, okay, maybe it's in milliliters, it doesn't say, for how many, one hour. Okay, so it's six for my rate of change. My zero term, I have to find my zero term here. So I'm going to first find my first term. I'm going to go back six. I'm at six. I'm going to find my zero term. My zero term, my initial value is zero. Let's do the same for table B. I'm looking... From 36 to 54, how many am I increasing? Well, I should be increasing 18. If I look from 4 to 6, I should be increasing 2. So my rate of change is 9. So then I have to find my initial value. So it's the same thing. I'm going up 2, so if I go back to here, I'm at 2, I'm going to subtract 18. I'm at 18. I'm going to subtract 18 again for my first term. I'm at zero. My zero term is negative 18. Sometimes the y-intercepts aren't going to make sense. Okay, remember that's called extrapolation. And here it doesn't make sense. But my zero term is negative 18. I'm going to have you look at the next few slope problems and try them and put your answers into Edpuzzle. 
Now we're ready for our function review. Remember when we're talking about functions, a function passes the vertical line test and none of our x values repeat. A function is a graph, an equation, or a table where each input has exactly one output. So look at our examples here. I have the ordered pair 1c, 2b, and 3c. None of my x values repeat, it's a function. If I graph this, which I don't know what, what these numbers are, it would pass the vertical line test. My y values can repeat, my x values cannot. So here, if I use the vertical line test, I see doesn't pass, it's not a function. That's because I have an ordered pair here, maybe this is negative one zero, and this is negative one four. Okay, doesn't pass the vertical line test, not a function. Passes the vertical line test, function. Let's look at the first example together. X equals five. If I'm gonna graph this, I go over to my x-axis to five, that means any x value of five. Well, this does not pass the vertical line test, it's not a function. Y equals five. passes the vertical line test. This is the skier skiing and crossing. This is zero fun. This has a zero slope. This is a function. Passes. None of my x values will repeat. Here, all of my x values will repeat. <coughs> y equals 5x. My y-intercept is zero. Up five over one. Up five over one. Passes the vertical line test. Function. Here, I can't tell until it's in slope-intercept form. I have to solve for y. Passes the vertical line test. Function. The last one we want to look at, x equals 5 over y. If I divide by 5, this is y equals 1 over 5x. This passes the vertical line test. Up 1 over 5. Up 1 over 5. This is a function. I'm going to have you try the next example, and then we'll go over it together. Let's see what you put here. A relationship between x and y is defined by this equation. x is the input, y is the output. Which statements are true? The graph of the relationship is a line. So can I graph this? Will it be a straight line? Yes, it's in slope-intercept form. There's a y-intercept, there's a slope. I can graph it. It's going to be a straight line. y is a function of x. Here it's just asking, when I input an x value, will I output a different y value? Is this a function? If I input an x value, I'm going to output something. It is a function. It is a straight line. Any straight line in slope-intercept form is a function. C, when the input is negative 7, the output is 3. Well, I have to input negative 7 in for x and see if I output 3. Negative 2 over 5 times negative 7 over 1 plus 1 fifth. I want to see if this equals 3. 14 fifths plus 1 fifth. Okay, yes. Let's look at uh, D. When the input is negative 5, the output is 9. Nonlinear, straight line, exponent, nonlinear, 
nonlinear exponent, linear. X is in the numerator, linear. X cubed, nonlinear. Anytime you have an exponent, anytime X is in the denominator, nonlinear. And the last one in the function category. Which equation has both 3 and negative 3 as a possible solution? So when I put in 3 or negative 3, I'm going to get a correct answer. 3 squared is not 6. 3 squared is 9. Negative 3 squared is 9. 3 cubed is not 6. 3 cubed is 27, but negative 3 cubed is not 27. Negative 3 cubed is negative 27. A negative times a negative times a negative. You should get C. I want you to try the function questions and see how you do. Our last review item is systems of equations. A system of equations means you have two equations. The solution is where the two equations intersect. It's the solution to both equations. Remember, there's different types of solution. One solution, no solution, which means your lines aren't going to cross, and infinite solution, which means both equations make one line, the same line. Here's some examples. If the slope and the y-intercept are the same, this is going to be infinite solution. Okay, these two lines are exactly the same. If I look here and I see that my slopes are not the same, I'm going to go ahead and use the equal value method. They're set equal to each other. I'm going to solve and see what my solution is. You should see that they intersect at 1, 6. I want you to try the last few examples. Now let's check them. First thing here, you should notice they're not in slope intercept form. Turn in your packet when you're done. 
Have a good day, guys. Have a nice weekend.